Good morning, everyone. It is good to be in God's house. Just a reminder that this Saturday coming, there's a men's breakfast at 8 a.m. And we'll be studying the uh, great deceiver, who, who we all know as Satan. So this is what men, men's breakfast, 8 o'clock this Saturday. And there's a little video we're going to watch about it. Good morning. The Lord be with you. As always, it's good to be here in the house of the Lord to worship him and to thank him for his loving mercy. Uh, this morning, we celebrate in the Christian church the third Sunday in Lent. And we want to thank all those who are serving God's house today. Thank you for your service in God's kingdom. A few announcements. Well, you heard one about the men's breakfast this coming Saturday. Uh, over there, you could see what are those activities that we are going to have this week. And I hope that you are able to participate in any of them. Remember, we have a midweek Lenten service uh, here at Faith at, at 7 p.m. Previously at 6, there is soup supper. So you are welcome to participate and come. Uh, another thing that I wanted to, to mention is about Vacation Bible School 2024 here at Faith from August 12 to August 16 from 9 a.m. to 12 noon. I know that it's a little bit early to announce that, but we are looking for uh, volunteers, for leaders, a couple of leaders who could help us in this VBS and others volunteers for others activities. So if you are able to help in any way, please uh, speak with, with me or speak with uh, one of the elders and we will appreciate that. And please uh, note that we are going as well to have on that week uh, VBS as well at Grace from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. So uh, both places, we're going to be working hard. We need volunteers here. We need volunteers there. But just put it there in order for you to be thinking about that. And especially those uh, parents who have children aged 4 to 12 years old, to add this day to their calendar and think about that to bring your children for Vacation Bible School in August 12 to August 16. Uh, Pastor Ma uh, Fran will be speaking to us after the service, uh, so a few, a few minutes. So please stay after the service to, to hear what he has to speak regarding Lutheran social service. And I think that that's going to be the, the main theme. Thank you for coming and worshiping with us, Pastor Frank. I guess you have something else. OK. OK, so well, you mentioned that. You know, there is a video after the men's breakfast. Yeah. Um, and, and if you see something, that, the hymns numbers, over there we have 422, almost at the end. And here we have 42. The thing that is the two fell down. I f just found it, okay? <laughs> so you go with that, 422, okay? <laughs> because the, the, the other two, I'm going to put it here. <laughs> and I'm going to put it now. So I guess uh, now we, we are ready for, okay? The devil never shows up and says, hey, my name's Beelzebub, let's go ruin your life today. And that's what I did. The powers of this dark world and the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms are at work. The goal is to destroy you. Satan very much wants to steal, kill, and destroy. He, he wants to undo what God has done. He attacks people, he afflicts people, he possesses people. And we were dealing with more than one spirit that night. Satan continues his efforts to deceive. That's why it's so important to review some of his schemes so you can be ready. 
That's why it's so important for us to take a hard and honest look at the great deceiver, Satan. That was a short video for about the, the men's breakfast theme that we are going to be studying on, on this coming uh, Saturday. So I hope that you are able, all the men are able to come. Please rise and let us begin our service. We begin this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We continue with uh, God's kid's son, three stanzas from him, five, five, five. Maybe it's it. Children, come forward. How are you? Good. That's wonderful. Do you have a good sleep? Yeah. yeah. You sleep well all the time? Yeah? That's good. That's good. Listen, uh, I have a message for you from, from the Holy Bible, and this is from the Gospel of John, chapter 2. So I'm just going to make it a little bit short for you, my friends. And I want, I have a question for you. What is this? What do, or what do we need this? Do you, have you, uh, yes? Okay. To clean the floor, yes. And there are other tools you know, that we could use to clean the floor or clean tables or counters, etc. Uh, the garage, for example, there are other tools. So we use this one to clean, you know? And you like to clean at home? Huh? Huh? <laughs> Look like that, that doesn't like to clean. Huh? Maybe you clean a little bit here and there, no? For example, if you are playing with your toys 
at the end of the day, do you put it back where they were? And nicely, you put it back? Do you do that? Wonderful, I like that. That you do that and you help mom and dad to keep a place clean. You know, let me tell you something that happened with Jesus a, while, a long time ago. Um, you know, he went to the church, his temple. He went to the church, and you know what he found there? People were selling stuff there. You know, pigeons, uh, sheep, and, and, and money changers, and all that. They were, that was kind of a business a business there. So, and Jesus, you know what? He got upset because he says that the house of the Lord is a place for what? For prayer, for worshiping the Lord. And they were not doing that, and, and that was very sad. So he, 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 he got upset. So, and, and, and Jesus, hello, my friend. And Jesus still comes to us to clean not the floor, to clean not the counter or a car inside and out. No, he comes to clean what? He comes to clean us. And when he died for us on the cross, he cleaned us. So now, each time that we get dirty inside our heart, for many bad things that we do. And when we repent of our, our sin, those things that, that we, we do that are not right, he cleans us, he forgives our sins. And that he's still reminding us that this is a place to worship. So when we come here, especially in this sanctuary, we come here to, to worship him, to sing to the Lord, to receive the forgiveness, and we respect this place. So when we are here, what do we, we do? We do all those things and we respect this place. We walk, for example, we don't play around. Uh, we could go and play outside, but here we respect it because this is a place for worship the Lord. But the main thing is that uh, the message is that Jesus still comes to us to clean our hearts for those things that are not good and he forgives our sins when we repent of our sins and we recognize that we have sinned to the Lord and we seek his forgiveness and what he does, he forgives us. And this is not wonderful. So always remember that you come to the Lord when you have done something bad, remember that you could come to Jesus and he forgives your sins, okay? Wonderful. So now I invite you and the rest of the members who are here to repeat after me. Let us pray. God, help us to remember that we are your temple and that your spirit lives in us. Help us to keep our lives clean and useful for service to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for coming. So go downstairs for, for classes. For, that's wonderful. Please rise, we continue with the opening sentences. Brothers and sisters in Christ, God invites us to gather in his name. We are gathered to worship and praise. Our Heavenly Father's house is a house of prayer for all the nations. We listen to God's word. Though this is a house of prayer, we do not always honor God's house as we should. Still, our Heavenly Father is merciful, and He invites us ever into His house to ask for forgiveness. Let us have a moment of silence to reflect on those sins that we have committed against God and against our neighbors.
Heavenly Father, and against our neighbors, we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. Disrupt our sinfulness, forgive us, renew us, and restore us on account of Jesus. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, send Jesus into our world, not only to disrupt our sinfulness, but also to forgive us by his death and resurrection. As a call and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We are forgiven because of Christ crucified. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. 
Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, whose glory it is always to have mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways and bring them again with penitent hearts and a steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading today is from Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 through 17. God offers ten words for the people he delivered from Egypt. And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me, you shall not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You should not bow down to them or serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and the fourth generation of those who hate me but showing steadfast love to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the Lord of the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath day to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter, your male servant or your female servant or your livestock or the sojourner who is within your gates. For in the six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his male servant or his female servant or his ox or his donkey or anything that is your neighbor's. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 through 31. We preach Christ crucified. The word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, it pleased God through the folly of what we preach to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks seek wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and folly to the Gentiles. But to those who are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than men, 
and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For consider your calling, brothers. Not many of you were wise according to worldly standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, even things that are not to bring to nothing things that are, so that no human being might boast in the presence of God. He is the source of your life in Christ Jesus, whom God made our wisdom and our righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let the one who boasts boast in the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Destroy this temple. Holy Gospel, according to St. John, the second chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus cleanses the temple, and this will be the text for our sermon this morning. Please rise to hear the Gospel. The Passover of the Jews was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found those who were selling oxen and sheep and pigeons and the money changers sitting there. Making a whip of cords, he drove them all out of the temple with the sheep and oxen, and he poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned the t- their tables. And he told those who sold the pigeons, take these things away. Do not make my father's house a house of trade. His disciples remember that it was written, seal for your house will consume me. So the Jews said to him, What signs do you show us for doing these things? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, It has taken 46 years to build this temple, and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. When therefore he was raised from the dead, the disciples remember that, that he has said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. Now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover feast, many believed in his name when they saw the signs that he was doing. But Jesus, on his part, did not entrust himself to them because he knew all people and needed no one to bear witness about man, for he himself knew what was in man. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Now we confess our Christian faith speaking the Apostle Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered from their Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, was buried. He descended to hell. Their day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and sit at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, in the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. We continue with the sermon hymn.
dear friends in Christ, uh, this morning with God's help, we are going to meditate in the Gospel of John chapter 2, verses 13 to 25, which I read a while ago. Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit who has brought us together. Amen. Dear believers in Christ, I think you have heard the proverb, in like a lion, out like a lamb. The phrase is simple enough to figure out. The weather to start the month of March is bad, roaring like a lion. And the month ends in a much calmer, nicer way, gentle like a lamb. Right now, you could see it by yourself that, that we are in March, at the beginning of March, and we are enjoying a very nice weather. It's the opposite now. It is like a lamp, but it could end up out like a lion. I hope not. In like a lion, out like a lamp. It could be true for March. As we work our way through Lent to Good Friday, we will see that it is also true for the Messiah, the Savior Jesus Christ, and his march in and out of the city of Jerusalem. The gospel reading for today tells us that Christ Jesus came into the city like a lion, at least in the minds of many. But in a non too distant future, he would go out like a lamb, a lamb led to the slaughter, the lamp of God who takes away the sin of the world. That is kind of what we see today. Jesus is going through the temple like a lion, the lion of the tri tribe of Judah, overturning tables and scattering money. He makes a whip out of cords and drives both men and animals from the temple. This is not the Jesus we are used to. It is not the cute Jesus wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. It is not the Jesus who dines with tax collectors and sinners, loves stubborn disciples and warmly touches untouchable lepers. And yet this is Jesus. True Jesus, not Jesus acting out of character. This is Jesus acting out of love and compassion. Jesus caring for his bride, the church. We might call it tough love. But it is love just the same. Love that cannot stand idle by, but acts is passionate, compassionate, zealous, driven, consuming. And yet, do not misunderstand. It was not the house, the temple itself, that was so important. God had been satisfied with a traveling tent, the tabernacle. What was important was what took place at the table, at, at the temple, at the temple. It was the place of the shedding of blood. It was the place where God and man were reconciled. It was here sin was dealt with and forgiveness given. A place of faith in the promise of God. And that was exactly what was not being taken seriously anymore. The house of God, which was supposed to be a house of prayer, a house of faith and forgiveness, a house of holiness, had been turned into Temple Mart. What had started out with good intentions, providing sacrificial animals for traveling pilgrims who could not bring them themselves, had turned into doing the right thing for the wrong reasons. 
Christ's bride, his church, his people were not being taken care of anymore. Forgiveness had been turned into big business, and God's love and grace had been weighed and measured, something to be bought and sold. Maybe you could even charge your sacrifice on your master card. Tap and go forgiveness. And that is not how it is supposed to be. So the business of God had replaced the forgiveness of God. And it is not like it only happened that one time way back then. And Jesus got it sorted out so that it never happens again. No. Because sometimes it happens here in our lives as well. When things get busy, when things get hectic, when God gets lost in the shuffle, or maybe even worse, when he becomes just one more thing to do. Oh, we might still come to church. We might even pray and read his word too. But are we busy doing Christianity and doing church and forgetting what we need the most? That would be forgiveness. And where that is happening for us, that would be right here on our knees as poor, miserable sinners coming before a loving and most gracious God to hear and receive that most needed forgiveness. Does the business of God replace the forgiveness of God? How we reduce our Lord and his forgiveness down to a transaction, to a business. It is easy for us to look back to what was happening at the temple and think, what was the matter with these people? Well, the same thing that is the matter with you and me. Sinners falling into the same trap. Sinners getting it mixed up making a mess of it and getting God lost in the shuffle. And so maybe we are a little lengthened turning over of the tables in our hearts and driving out of the beast of sin that have settled in and made themselves at home right in us. We need the love and compassion of God that would not let us go our way that will not let us stay in our sin and die. We need the love and compassion of God that gives the law, the Ten Commandments, to show us our sin in order to cleanse the tainted temples of our hearts. We need the love and compassion of God that cuts in order to heal, that kills in order to make alive that dies in order to rise to life again. We need the love and compassion of God that caused him to send his son into our sin-filled world. We need the love and compassion of God that consumes Jesus with zeal for the temple because he is consumed with zeal for you, for each of you. We need the love and compassion of God that will drive us to repentance, to recognize our sin. And thanks be to God that we have such a God who is completely consumed with you, with your forgiveness and reconciliation, who cares about everything, even every little detail, detail of your life, who cares about how you live, who cares about what you think about this and that, and about this person and that person, who cares about the things you do, who cares when he sees you wandering away and moving away from him, who cares when he sees you hurting yourself in things that may seem harmless, who cares so much that maybe you do not even like it because he steps in to do something 
about what is going on that should not be going on here and there and everywhere else and right in the places where you are. And make sure you understand that Jesus is stepping into places you do not want him. It's where and when he not only works in your hearts and lives to drive us to repentance, but, uh, but that has provided a new temple. A new temple that has taken the place of the old one. A new temple that is not built in Jerusalem. A new place where God dwells with his people, not in a stone, but in flesh and bone. And so a new place where God and man are brought back together again, where forgiveness takes place. The new temple of which Jesus said, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. And so it was. For that dwelling of God, destroyed on the cross, was raised up three days later, which means that while the other temple, the old temple, it's long gone. This new temple is still with us and will always be with us, with us in love and compassion, to care, forgive, teach, lead, heal, speak, cleanse, wash, and feed. Here to care for his bride, his church, to care for each of you still completely consumed by love for you. That is the Jesus who roars through the temple, that Passover in Jerusalem, the lion of the tribe of Judah. But there would be a Passover when that lion would be led out like a lamb, the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world doing away with the need for any other sacrificial lamb ever again. The sacred head, now wounded, the one stricken, smitten, and afflicted, the one who had his back open with the whips and his hands and feet pierced with nails, is the one who has redeemed you, redeemed me, lost and condemned sinners, not with gold or silver, but with his holy, precious blood and with his innocent suffering and death to purchase and win us to be his own forever. And so, the one consumed with us is consumed by our sin on the cross. And yet he is not consumed, but risen and lives to give forgiveness. And the one consumed with us is consumed by our death in his death. And yet, he is not consumed, but risen and lives to give life. And the one consumed with us is now consumed by us, as he gives us his body to eat and his blood to drink. And yet, he is not consumed, but risen and lives in us. His life into our life and our life into his life. All, all with one goal in view for you, for each of you, that we might live with him forever. That as he dwell with us here in our home, we too might dwell with him there in his home, in a place that he has prepared for each of us. And that was always the plan. That was always the plan. That when the new temple came to Jerusalem, the old temple would pass away. That Christ be made the sure foundation of both our lives here and our lives forever. And so, as the Apostle Paul wrote, we preach Christ crucified, not a God who can deal with, not a God who puts up with us, not a God who is content to let us go our ways, wings at our indiscretions and cuts us a little slack. No, but a God 
who one Passover came roaring through the temple like a lion so that he could be led out like a lamp to the cross. And who in, in so doing conquered sin, death, and hell. Who in so doing redeemed us as his own. For he is a God who could not stand idle by and who still cannot. But in love and compassion comes to us, not mad at you, but mad for you. In Jesus' name, amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We continue collecting the offering, and we're going to be singing the hymn 422. Please rise for prayer of the church. On our hearts imprint your image. Blessed, Blessed Jesus, King of Grace. Lord Jesus Christ, lead your church on earth to be a house of prayer for all the nations. Remind us, Lord, that our mission is to bring your gospel to every culture, civilization, and ethnic group in the community where we live. On our hearts, imprint your image. Blessed Jesus, King of Grace. Lord Jesus Christ, as you delivered the people out of slavery in Egypt and taught them how to live as your people, so teach us to live according to your righteous instructions so that we may live peacefully with you and our neighbors. On our hearts, imprint your image. Lord Jesus Christ, you are well acquainted with grief and death. Bring your comfort to all those who are suffering in grief. Point them to the hope that in your Father's house are many rooms, and that you have gone to prepare a place for us. On our hearts imprint your image. Blessed Jesus, King of grace. Lord Jesus Christ, intercede for all those struggling with relationship issues, whether in friendships, family dynamics, marital struggles, or relationships, relationships with the church. We pray that you would bring repentance, forgiveness, and reconciliation in the midst of such a struggle. On our hearts, imprint your image. Blessed Jesus, King of grace. Lord Jesus Christ, send your strength to all missionaries in the world who are working to expand your kingdom on earth. Embolden them to preach the power of your cross. Encourage them in their service by the same message they proclaim, that you have died and are risen for us in our salvation. On our hearts imprints your image. Jesus, King of grace. Lord Jesus Christ, look with favor upon all who are sick, injured, and recovering. Especially this day, we pray for AJ, who is battling addiction, for Eileen, for Michelle, for Ruth, for Nancy, for Ellen, for Colin, for Michelle, for Justin, for Sandra, for Isabel, for Ladi, for Mary, for Tom, for Corey, 
for John, for Pastor Saul and his pregnant wife, Kira, for Pastor Ron, for Pastor Gerald and his wife, Doreen, for Pastor Ted, for Linda, for Wes, for Barb and Stu, for Lloyd and Elsie, for Starsha, for Mircha, for Vicky, for Patricia, for Dorothy, for Sandra, for Karen, for Shirley, for Nancy, for Alice, for Marcia, for Rachel and her children, for Jason, for Walter and Donna, for Cheryl, for Becky, for Anna, for Delbert, for Grace, for Nancy and Stan. We pray also for those we name in our hearts and minds. O Lord, have mercy upon them and restore them to health according to your good and gracious will. On our hearts imprint your image. Merciful Father, you created the families of the earth, and you lead them to be homes of blessings and love. We pray for, for Cindy, for Melissa and Michael, for Patricia, for Ellen, and for Brian and Carol. Guide each of them in the path of salvation, and they love and serve you and others around them. Lord, in your mercy, Merciful Lord, guide those who travel for business or pleasure that they may depart and arrive in safety with their dear ones. Also, bless those who celebrate their birthdays this week, especially for Luis, for Brian, for Madeline, for Jason, for Zach, and Anne, that they live their life united to your word and trust in your promises of an everlasting life in, in, in Christ. As well, the giver of salvation, remember those who celebrate their wedding anniversary this week. Especially we remember Keith and Shirley. Always open their hearts to see your love toward them and help them at each step of their life. Lord, in your mercy. Your Merciful Father, we pray for all pastors, especially our synod president, Reverend Timothy Tosher, and our regional pastor, Marvin Bublitz, together with our pastors, from Lutheran Church Canada, deaconesses, teachers, missionaries, and servants of the church. Give them courage to speak your saving word fearlessly, that it may do it mighty work by your spirit's power. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus, we commend all of these people and situation into your hands. For you had promised to hear our prayers and intercede for us for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. My friends in Christ, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
Please uh, sit for, for a while so Pastor Man, uh, Fran will say a few words. Good morning and thank you for the privilege of being with you again. Uh, it wasn't that long ago that we were here. Uh, yeah, thank you for the opportunity of giving me the chance to talk to you about Lutheran Social Services. And I would like to thank one person in particular this morning for all the work that she has done in adding to our membership and on sitting on the board. Anna, thank you so much. You, you are a great, great help. I, I know that most of you know something or a little bit about Lutheran Social Services, and many of you are members. If you're not, you're missing out. Uh, I'll tell you just a, a little bit of the history. Uh, Norbert Schuler gave Trinity Lutheran Church a nursing home, Country Terrace in Kamoka. It came with a five and a half million dollar mortgage and all kinds of personnel problems, but a group of us took it on anyway and talk about a lamb to the slaughter. But we worked at that for 10 years, paid it off, all but about $350,000, and then we're able to sell it in 2007 for seven million dollars. Uh, we sold it and took six and a half million put into a foundation, a charitable foundation, and began to do charitable work here in town among the different charities. Since that time, the foundation has grown to over 11 million dollars and we have also given away 4.3 million. By the time this year is over, it will be probably over $5 million in that period of time. So we are doing a lot of mission work, charitable work, church work, God's work here in this town. And I must say that the Lord has truly blessed us. Uh, had it been left to us, we would have made a mess of it. But like, like people are making a mess of the world today. But in God's hands, we have been so blessed and have grown so much to, to God be the glory. Uh, each year, then we try to give away about $400,000 to charities here in town. We have a website, uh, it has been down for a while, but we have a new fellow now in charge of it, and it's up and running. So if you know anybody, any charity here in town that has a charitable number and needs some financial help, please let me know or let us know so that we can help those, the, that charity or those people out. Uh, each of our Lutheran churches here in town is a member and has members on the board. This year, our foundation has been able to help each of the congregations with $10,413.33. That's because of our investments. Now, we've given $5,413.33 in January. We are going to give another $5,000 in June. So this is the kind of assistance that we've been trying to give to the, chair, uh, to the churches because they are also charities. Uh, we continue to provide $10,000 matching dollar for dollar on any projects that you have in a, in a church during the year. Uh, that's an, another thing that we do. The educational grant that we have is $12,000, and that goes to help anyone in the congregation who has been out of school for three years 
wishes to go back to school and be retrained or upgrade their education. So those, that's an opportunity that you have to come and apply for some of that money. Uh, as I said, our membership is from the uh, six churches and we are finally privileged to have each church represented on the board. Uh, we finally had a representative, Pastor Vagie's wife, from Our Savior this year, come on, on the board. So we're very grateful for her, and she's doing a wonderful job. Uh, now, when I talk about our membership, I can't, I can't really impress upon you enough how we need members. Our charter with the government depends upon having a membership. This past year, we have lost several people through death. And so we, we need to keep our numbers up. And if you are not a member, please consider it. You have one obligation, actually two. Your membership costs you a dollar, and that's good for life. And secondly, we ask you to attend the annual general meeting once a year in June. That's all. And if you can't attend, you have a proxy that you can send in and have your membership uh, ratified. Now, if you know any charities in this town, as I said before, any charities that need help, please let us know because we are here to help. Uh, those of you who are members know how much money we give each year to the food bank, 12000 to St. Paul's and their, and their uh, sandwich program, 16000 to ANOVA, the uh, Women's Abuse Center and so forth. So we're giving money all the time to all these different organizations. Uh, one, one thing that I have always really tried to work on, and that is to have everybody feel a oneness, a unity. And that's one thing that we really feel in the foundation, a unity. Last fall, we had a hymn sing at Trinity Lutheran Church on the 22nd of October, and we had a tremendous turnout. People said, hey, this is so good. Let's do it again. Well, guess what? September the 29th, we are going to have another hymn sing, and what we're asking for is each congregation to submit three of your favorite hymns. It's going to be based upon favorite hymns. So if you will do that, tell Anna, and she can bring it back to the board, and then we will put that program together. Uh, I've probably spoken too long now, but anyway, uh, it, it's always great to be with you. If you have any questions, please just ask me right now. No? I have one. Are you a member? Yes. yes. If you're not, will you join? Yes. I'll be at the door. It, it gives you a, an opportunity to say how the money is to be spent here in this town. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks all of you for coming and bless, uh, praise the Lord, our God, our Savior. And remember, with the final sprint forward, set your clock ahead next weekend. Okay? So God bless you. Go out and serve the Lord. Take care. Next weekend. Next weekend.